Hi there, and welcome to the Forest Park podcast that we call On Mission. I'm excited to have with us Michael Panther from Living with Hope Ministries. He's got a new book out, and I'm only on chapter nine. Sorry, I was supposed to read it before we before we had our podcast, but it's an incredible story. So, Michael, thanks a lot for being here. Can you tell us about your journey and how you got involved with Living with Hope Ministries? Let's just start there. Oh, thank you so much, Luke. It's so good to be here. Uh, so my my story started a uh, while back in a country called South Sudan. Uh, I was born uh, during the Civil War. And uh, as a young boy, I didn't know what the word peace meant uh, because we were running around every single day, running for our life, moving from one place to another. And so that journey was not easy. And then on top of that, I got sick and uh, I didn't know what was wrong with me uh, because over there they don't have medical facilities. Uh, so uh, my dad and my mom were thinking a lot about how to help me. And they, my mom say, uh, told my dad that he need to take me to neighboring country, Kenya. And, and that was during the war. And at that time I was like, no, I don't want my my dad to take me to Kenya and leave my mom with young siblings. Right. And so I was like, no, I don't want to do that. Let me just stay here. If I die, I'm going to die, but I don't want to uh, put the whole family at risk. We may not make it to Kenya, and my family, my mom and my sibling may not be alive. Uh, but uh, my mom, deep love for me was was really just so big that he say, you know, God is going to take care of, uh, of us. And so you need to go with wow. that. And um, so we came to Kenya. We came to a refugee camp. And in that uh, refugee camp, we l- were looking for medical facilities in Kenya, but they didn't have enough uh, f- medical care attention that they could give me. Uh, but uh, God uh, did a miracle. He sent a mission doctor uh, to the camp, and that mission doctor looked at me and they say, we're going to take you to a hospital uh, just outside Nairobi, Kenya. So, Now, in the book, you, you said it took a couple of months to, yeah. to go from Sudan in, in, into Kenya, and there was, there was flooding, and there were mosquitoes, and, and your dad had to carry you most, most of the way. It was just so harrowing, and I, I, w- I was, yeah. was in tears I'm, as I'm yeah. reading this, uh, yeah. seeing this father's love and... <laughs> You, s- you also mentioned that your your mom and your younger siblings might not be safe without yes. d- dad being, pr- being there. provided. So how did that, how did that work psychologically and emotionally? Yeah, it was not you? easy, you know. It was it was really very difficult. Even halfway through the journey, I say, let's turn back. I don't know whether we're gonna make it. Um, but also, wow. my dad too was very determined uh, to take me to Kenya, and so that journey was not easy. It was. Uh, uh, it's a miracle itself you know, how we made it. Yeah, uh, it to certainly to seemed like to, it. to Kenya. So, so yeah, we made it there. But um, yeah, it took us a while to get there, and then also it got it took us a uh, even while to make it to the hospital. So from the time that I got sick to the time that I made it to the hospital, it has already been two years, and by then uh, the disease has already done a lot of damage in my body, uh, but. If uh, I needed the surgery that need to be done on my spine, uh, I had a TB of spine. That uh, what the diagnosis was, uh, and I didn't even know it could <coughs> get into the spine. Right? Yes, you think of yes. tuberculosis mostly for the lungs. Lungs, yes. Uh, and uh, over there in Africa, it's very common there, especially when you don't have those healthy immunizations and all those. Um, so, and that could as easily be treated with antibiotics. Okay. Uh, took us a while. Uh, uh, to get to the hospital, uh, but uh, God uh, took me there, uh, and then I went through surgeries, and there was a lot of compl- complications. I didn't know whether I was gonna survive. Right. Uh, even the doctor himself, Doctor Mead, uh, who goes to this church, mm-hmm. uh, he always say that you know you are living miracle because even him he didn't know whether I was gonna survive. Um, so fast forward after I started feeling better at the hospital I was in a wheelchair and uh, they didn't know what was wrong 
uh, like where I will go from there, you know, after I got treated and everything, mm-hmm. what my life will be if I go back to the refugee camp in a wheelchair. So, but God had another story in his mind. He spoke to Mama Jenna, Jenna Mead, uh, that they need to take care of me. Uh, so they took uh, care of me, let me go to school. Uh, I first went to school in 2007. That's my first official schooling. I never had schooling before. Wow. And, uh, and then in 2012, from 2007 to 2012, I was able to go from first grade to 12th grade. You can do the math, how many <laughs> months of those, how many years of those. Uh, and then uh, I had an opportunity to come to the U.S. I went to Louisiana State University. Uh, so, so it's just been uh, an incredible, incredible journey uh, for me uh, to, uh, you know, just looking back when I came here, how far God has brought me. Yes. Uh, I never thought that I would be in this kind of situation. And just looking back to uh, if I had stayed in, in Sudan, uh, children or the young boys like myself were gain, getting drafted to go to the, 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 the army to fight for the country. Right. So at that time that I got sick, well, I was getting ready to be drafted to go to, to war. So I felt like it's the way of God saving my life because most of my age mates that were drafted around that time, they didn't make it wow. during the war. So I felt like God just had uh, his way of rescuing me in that way to go through what I went through, you know, yeah. just to protect me. Uh, but then as I came to the U.S., and so how people with disability are treated, I was impacted uh, because back in Africa, people with disability are considered as people with no value. Right. Uh, people with um, their view as a curse uh, to the society. They are isolated. They face a lot of social stigma, uh, discrimination, and even death uh, because of their disability. So that's really um, just uh, captured my heart when I came here and see people with disability being loved. Mm. And uh, I just like, oh, I need to see how God could use me someday to go back to Africa and share, and share this love for people, for people, people with disability. I was still at school at that time, so I didn't know how that going to look like. Sure. Um, so... Uh, but God continued to open doors for me. Uh, he connected me with Johnny Erickson Tata, which is on this uh, cover of the book. Um, he has an incredible disability ministry uh, here in the, uh, in, the, in the U.S. and around the world. Uh, so I got to learn a little bit about what the disability ministry looked like while I was still in school. All right. And so uh, then in 2000. 16, I finished school and I started working. Uh, I, uh, my degree is in economics, so I was working in the business field. Really? Uh, for a little bit. Okay. And then during that time, God just uh, started working in my life. He just continued to let that passion bur- burn in my heart. Some days I couldn't sleep because I was like, God, how are you going to use me? You mm. know, like show me the way how you can use my life, right. you know. Because that was one of the prayer that I pray when I was in the hospital. I say, God, if you save my life, use it for the good of your kingdom. Uh, so, so yeah, I just uh, decided to see the way that I could go back to Africa. And one of the things was to bring mobility. I'm in a wheelchair myself. And I know that people with disability there uh, experience, uh, you know, all the things that they experience. They are poorest of the poor, so they cannot afford something like a wheelchair, you know. Uh, so, and I remember in some of the school that I went to back in Kenya, I had some of my classmates crawling to classes. Goodness. Uh, so those images were still vivid uh, in my mind. Right. And so I started just thinking about how to do that. And 
I started a ministry called Living with Hope uh, with the mission of sharing hope of Jesus Christ through the gift of mobility. And so we started that in 2017, 18. And uh, from there, God had just been taking over the whole ministry to something that I could have never imagined. Wow. Yeah. How, does, uh, how, how does your experience, how does, how does faith play a role in providing hope to those that you're serving through, through Living Hope? Yes, so, you know, well, is you know, this is this hope is deep rooted in the goodness of God. Um, and faith has really uh, been a big part of my journey uh, because if I didn't have faith, you know, I think I would have given up uh, so many times ago. Yeah, in in and the book, you talk so often about being filled with discouragement yes. and just re- ready to die. I can't. It, it's going to end at some point, but. Uh, God kept saving you and kept saving you and kept saving you. So, h- how did how did hope get itself fused in, into your your story? I mean, you obviously saw God show up in numerous ways when you thought you were going to die. Yes, yes, I've seen I've seen God. You know, it's pro- probably during my two years stay at the Cure Hospital in Kenya. Uh, I think that's when I, you know, I really got to embrace my identity in Christ. Because uh, I saw God, yes, doing incredible work in my life, mm. uh, both physical and spiritually. Uh, I've seen how he used so many people, like the doctors, uh, to save my life and just to rescue me from the suffering that I was going through. And just seeing God also protecting my family, like in in South Sudan. So that is just, you know, or just looking at all those things, it's just like, there has to be God, you know? Yes. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, this thing could have not been happening. This is, this is a miracle, you know? And uh, not many people could say that that have, have experienced yeah. miracles in their life. Right. And so this is where my faith just kind of deepened. And uh, I just wanted to share that hope with the other people that are in need. Yes, and you're clearly <laughs> currently living out your calling. Can can you uh, share some insight on how the intersection of faith and hope and community building all happens in in Living with Hope Ministries? Yes, so so Living with Hope, you know, as I say, is a ministry that's sharing hope of Jesus Christ through the given mobility. Uh, we're using these mobility devices as a tool to share the gospel. Uh, so every person that we come in contact with in Kenya, we share the gospel with them. Wow. We give them a Bible, and we let them know, actually, the Bible, not the wheelchair. They will p- be so excited about getting a wheelchair so that they don't have to crawl down, crawl anymore. Right. But we tell them the Bible is the most important gift that we're giving you. And they are even excited, even more than because some of them have uh, never seen a Bible, too, you know. Uh, and uh, they, you know, some of the older p- folks give them a reading glasses to start reading the Bible, uh-huh. and it just it's just amazing to see. So we share the gospel, give the Bible to every person we come in contact with. We also train pastors and local leaders on how to embrace mm. people with disability to be uh, uh, an important part of the body of Christ. That, so that's a full-on <laughs> culture change then. Yes, right? yes, because... You know, as a culture, they say before, people with disability are a kind of view as there's a social stigma uh, against the people with disability. So we, even the the church too, is not very welcoming to people with disability. Wow. Uh, if a pastor see you, they will come and pray for healing, and then they will go. They don't want to do anything with you. Uh, so even when I was in Kenya, I remember. Um, uh, being taken to church and like by the by the meads and they will take me to church and people will be staring at me, you know, just like and they don't want to sit next to me too. Mm. Um, because of that social stigma. So we just tell them that these people with disability are important part of the body of Christ and you need to embrace them. Right. You know? And, and that's kind of go back even to the, the days of Jesus when Jesus was here on earth, you know. Uh in uh, John nine, verse one to Three, when Jesus was walking along with his disciple, uh, they spotted a blind man, and uh, his disciple asked him, Rabbi, 
who sin, this man or his parent, that he was born blind. Mm. Uh, but Jesus say, neither this man nor his parent sin, but this happened so that the works of God may be displayed in, in him. Yes. And so we share those sin with the with the with the church in the this you know it's not about the sin you know the nobody sin you know right right we just embrace these people because God is working something in these people's life that will turn the whole country you know the whole community through this person with disability and uh, the whole nation may change you know wow so we we you just share the about uh, about the the Bible theology of disability. Um, so it's just been incredible, you know, some of the pastors that have come to our training, you know, they will go back and they just go out in the community trying to find those with disability because they see. So you found the pastors pretty receptive <laughs> very, to, to, very to, to the message. Even okay. they, they actually just like doing some of our training, they will like just stand up and say, God, forgive me. Ah, wow. Well, oh, so you're seeing repentance in yeah, the, the, repent the people in, of Repenting and, and even doing that, yeah. Just like, we haven't done this. Wow. So, so that's, that's so revival. Just, that's incredible. It's just been incredible. So right now, uh, we are we are training a lot of pastors, with churches, how to start disability ministry in their churches. Okay. So actually, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we have a, a team that is going to Kenya, one of the biggest churches in Nairobi. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's a big church with 4,000 members. And they say we want to start disability ministry in our church, so because they say we have everything, it's just that we have we haven't been welcoming people with disability. Wow, we have a lot of members. We want to make sure that we get ten percent of our congregation to be people with disability. <laughs> so I would wow uh, some of our team members, um, the lady that is, uh, is kind of lead the, the disability training. Other members will be going in November. Mm-hmm. They're going to train the whole church, and then next year they're going to start a whole disability min- uh, disability ministry. Ah, that's phenomenal. And that church has about over two hundred other churches that are part of the church. Okay. So they want to s- spread out to all those churches, and then of course they are also uh, no other other churches in Nairobi. The other big churches also. I want to make sure that when they start this disability ministry, the other churches get it too. So this may be a whole new Sounds level. Sounds like the world's changing, Michael. Yeah, so this kind of, uh, the country of Kenya may be, yeah, uh, we're just so excited about what God is doing right now. That's, oh, that's so cool to hear. Uh, <laughs> what challenges have you encountered in, in this ministry, and how have you uh, and your team overcome come some of them? Uh, yes, the challenges, probably just because of the needs. Uh, and the needs are very overwhelming. Those needs are so great, right? Uh, and those are very challenges to be able to go there on the trip and not uh, serve everybody. You have to send those who have come from distant away. You are not giving the mobility, so that's been a challenge. Uh, so also getting wheelchairs, you know, the supplies of wheelchairs and getting them in through the country. Has has been a challenge, also. Okay, how so? How can you, what are the details? Why why is it so difficult to get wheelchairs into the country? Uh, it's just you know the the government sometimes they want to make you know try to let you pay more money or uh, more whole thing. Okay, so I got you. Yeah, so it's just been a, a challenge and just to deal with the custom and all those. Okay, all the paperwork that they need to be done, and if you don't do right, then they want to give you a fine, a way to g- make Man. money. Right. So that has been a challenge, and uh, we hope that things are start to open up now. Uh, the government is start, you know, seeing the work that we are doing. They are becoming more receptive, so I hope that continues. Okay. Uh, so are, they are they in generally pretty resistant to Christians? Uh, no, Kenya is actually very open. Okay. Uh, to 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 Christianity, uh, so we can go there and share gospel with no no issue. All right. And just all the other stuff like. Getting the wheelchair there, but other than that, when you're in the country, you're you're free to share the gospel. All right. So, in in your opinion, um, how can we inspire and empower more people to make a positive difference in in the lives of others through through living with hope? Uh, yes. So, there's so many ways that you can be partner with us. 
as I say, the needs are overwhelming, so we need support. You know, we we buy a lot of pediatric wheelchairs, and uh, because there's so many kids there that are laying on the floor right now, or that are being carried on the back by their parents, they cannot go to school because of their disability. So I hope uh, to get as many kids in the wheelchair as possible. Uh, so. Yeah, so helping us in buying more pediatric wheelchair would be great. Okay. Uh, as we are doing here as uh, Forest Park here, as you're collecting wheelchairs, that's a great way to help. We collect these wheelchairs. They were taken to be taken to some uh, prison, uh, prison here in the U.S., and they will be refurbished. And then once they are refurbished, we'll take them to, to Africa. Uh, so that's some ways that you can partner with us. All right. We also would love you to come on the trip. Um, yeah, this is a great trip for for couples, or young, yeah, everybody. Everybody, all young, yeah, okay. everybody. All as long as you can manage uh, the flights, you know, that's the longest. Thing. If you can do the flight to get there, all right, then you will be fine. Okay. Uh, so we need therapists, mechanics, and the therapists will help us with how the wheelchair fitted. You know, we don't just let somebody sit in a wheelchair and they go away. Sure. We want to make sure that the wheelchair are uh, well fitted with proper each person, fit. okay. proper fitted, and, and help them, you know. We don't want to cause any issue giving, giving them a wrong wheelchair, you know. Sure. So the therapies are that the mechanics will help ret- retrofit the wheelchair kind of adjust and all those those fun stuff. They really enjoy being a mechanic and thinking out of the box and how to tweak all the little details. Gotcha. And then... Um, so we any also kind of mechanic, d- like a, a car yeah. mechanic or a... Uh, it, even if you don't have a mechanic, we'll give you a tool and we'll let you... We'll, all right, you'll, you'll train us how we'll to be wheelchair you. mechanics. Y- yes, all right. yes, so if you... Yeah, if you ever use a tool one day, that's it, you are a mechanic. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, um, so, and then... Yes, and then we'll, uh, we'll also take a... Uh, support people that we we call them a support team, somebody that will come there and just uh, show the love mm. of Christ because these people have never seen this love before. So we want people that come alongside and just like love on them, uh, put the uh, give back together, give them a little, you know, socks, a hat, or whatever, put them in the back, and then we also give them a Bible. So the the support team will be the one that kind of handle that. And kind of be behind the scene helping the therapists and mechanics okay. with some of their work. Support team. So, so the, the relational people, the, yes. encur- the encouragers. The, the encouragers. So, so, so most of the time, a uh, husband could be a mechanic and a wife could be a support person. Okay. Uh, so that's n- how it normally works. So those people could come come alongside and be a part of that. Uh, some of the things also that we do, uh, we also sponsor kids to go to school. Mm. So we normally find some of these kids that have been abandoned. Uh, they are staying with their grandma or somebody, and they don't have a mean, even though we give them a wheelchair. They don't have a mean to go to school. Uh, to go to school. Okay. So we go above and beyond from just giving a wheelchair to make sure that these kids go to school. Uh, so we sponsor kids to go to school. How much on average does it cost? So to it's send about a kid to three three hundred dollars. Three hundred American for dollars a year for a year to send a, to send a, a kid, kid to in school in Kenya. In Kenya, wow! And then also, uh, pediatric wheelchair is about two seventy five. So if you give it two seventy five and then put the kid to school, you know, for for five hundred and seventy five dollars, yes, you changed you change your life, you know, life. yeah, wow! And uh, in that one year, you will be surprised how much they learn. Oh, I'm sure. You know? They start speaking in English in that you know uh-huh. that one year. So that's some of the other ways that uh, you could partner with us. And of course, uh, you can pray for our, the ministry. Uh, that God will continue to use this ministry to bring more people closer to Him. You know, uh, is there a giving button in, on on your website? Yeah, you could go to livingwithhope.net. Livingwithhope.net. Yes. Right, not dot com. Yeah. Livingwithhope.net. Living with then you can. Uh, I'll try to put that in the in the link of our, yeah. our, our YouTube. Yes. Uh, you talked about trips coming up. So what what future projects or initiatives is Living with Hope uh, got planned for 2024? Yes. So we have some trip coming up. Uh, so one of the thing that uh, I've been mentioned and actually that's uh, very important for our ministry. Uh, when we start going to Kenya. 
I, we wanted to empower the Kenyans to be the, be able to take care of right. the Kenyans, you know. So we had Kenyan team working alongside our U.S. team that we normally bring to learn how to work on wheelchairs and all those things. So therapists and mechanics, Kenyan, were working with our team. Mm -hmm. And then uh, last year, we decided we're going to have a center that we can use as... So when we bring our wheelchair, they have a place to go. Then the team will be able to work from there and go out in the community. Uh, so we have higher staff now. We have a center in Nairobi, about 10,000 square foot uh, warehouse. Wow. That we're going to use as a center for, you know, just we we'll do some feeding there, but also just as a storage for wheelchairs. Uh, so we have a, a present in Kenya throughout the year now. They go out in some of the corners that... The American team cannot make it, you know. Um, so that that work is going really well now, and we're trying to empower those people to continue to do that work. So we just want to send them wheelchairs, but we still wanted to work alongside them as as much as we can. Right. And so we are, uh, yeah, planning trips uh, next year. Uh, we have trip in in, in March, and then we're gonna have a trip in um, May, and then uh, potentially a trip in September. So three yeah, different trips, three, three different trips next Coming year. Coming in 2024, that's Twi exciting. Yes, and uh, you could come. And uh, so the, the trip are usually about 11 days. Okay. So it's, um, it's not too short, not too long. It's just a perfect thing. When you are done there, it's like, oh, it just went fast. But then sure. some people will say, oh, I was ready to come back, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. It, uh, yeah, so if you are, yeah, you are able, yeah, you could. You know, send us a message on the website there. Okay. If you're interested in going, and uh, we'll follow up with you. All right. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for being here, Michael. Your 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 story and your your work is just incredibly inspiring. Um, so in the book, you you speak three different languages. Is that what I read? Yes, I speak Dinka, which is Dinka. my your first language. You it first, and then and Swahili. And Swahili. A, a, little, and then a little bit. And then uh, just a little bit of English. So. And <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Pretty phenomenal. So it's, it's Michael Panther and Living with Hope. I was wondering if you could give us a, a blessing in, in Dinka or Swahili for, for our church. It okay, I think, yeah, the quick blessing, I will do it in Swahili because my Dinka is kind of up to take a time to think about it a little okay. bit more. Well, it's uh, then. But yeah, good. we could pray in uh, in Swahili. Bona na kuja bela zako unasema asante Mungu kwa kupatia wakati huu tuko hapa na look na Forest Park. Mungu tunachukuru sana kwa e, kila kitu umefanya katika hii kanisa na hii dunia. Uh, baba tunasema uh, karibu hii kwa hii wakati ubarikiwa uh, tunachukuru sana kwa jina la Yesu Kristo amen amen thank you thank you so much appreciate Michael. it and um, yeah thank you Luke and uh, Forest Park for your support and you just been uh, a big part of uh, this ministry you know as i say just a moment ago that um, uh, you know this church is part of my life you know as I say, you send two missionaries, a family, mm -hmm. missionary family, several years ago to go to Kenya and touch so many lives. And my life was one of those that was touched by them. Yeah. And to be able to come back. I know, I don't think sometimes, you know, when you send missionaries, you never get that kind of, you know, somebody from there that has been right. impacted to come back here. Right. So I just feel so humble to be to be back to where it all started so life come back in full circle yeah and i'm just um, yeah i'm just so thankful for each of you amen all right thank you god <laughs> bless you god bless you too too